Hi everyone and welcome to Polybrush. This tool lets you sculpt, blend, and scatter paint detail objects in Unity, very much like terrain except you can paint on any mesh at all. This video will cover everything you need to get started and you can check the documentation if you need more detailed info, which is also always up to date since it's online. Start by going to Tools, Polybrush, and then you can click on the About to open up version info, especially useful if you're posting a bug or anything like that or click on the documentation link to open up that documentation online and click the polybrush window option to open that up. This panel is fairly simple with three major areas. Across the top you have the modes area for switching between sculpting, smoothing, texture painting, etc. To activate any of these modes, just click on it and you'll see it is highlighted and to deactivate the mode, click on it again or hit escape on the keyboard. Below this toolbar you'll find the brush settings and mirroring area and below that you'll see the tool specific or mode specific options which is dynamic and depends on which mode you're in. Let's learn about the brush settings before we start doing any of the sculpting or painting. So activate any of the modes. We'll start with the, or I'll start with the mesh sculpting area here as it's the simplest. And then hover your mouse over a selected mesh. The brush will display an inner blue circle and an outer white circle the inner blue circle is the inner radius. Everything inside of here will get the maximum brush effect. And you can modify this by holding shift and scrolling. Or directly via the panel where it says inner radius. The outer white circle is the outer radius where the brush effect becomes zero. Modify this by holding control and scrolling. Or of course by using the outer radius option in the panel. You can also set the strength percentage, or also known as weight or opacity, of the brush. This is done via the panel where it says strength. Or you can hold control and shift and scroll to modify that. If you'd like a custom falloff curve, you can modify that and create some interesting effects. You'll almost always leave this one alone, but it's worth taking a look at and seeing what you can create just to get an idea for what's there. You can toggle open the brush radius min and max settings. If you need to work on especially small or large brushes, this can be handy to set these values. And of course, once you've set up the perfect brush or a number of them, you can click on the save button, choose save as to create a new one or save to overwrite. And you'll see it creates a new brush under the polybrush files. You can name it anything you like. Call this my brush and the Polybrush GUI should update and pick that up. To choose between brushes, click the drop down and choose any that are available or click add brush to add another one. With the brush settings in mind, we can move through each of the modes. So first at the top, sculpting lets you sculpt on a mesh just as it sounds. So you can left click and drag to sculpt or hold control to push inward. So sculpting, or the inverse action when sculpting. For sculpting, you have a few specific or mode specific settings. At the very top, ignore open edges. Will allow you to, as it sounds, ignore boundary edges or the, the open edges at the edge here. So as I'm painting, you can see that the sculpting brush is affecting everything except these edges on the outside. If I turn that off, now the brush is affecting those edges. So this is especially useful if you have maybe tiles or sections of your of your mesh that you'd like to make sure match together and you don't want the edges to change once you've placed them exactly. Brush normal is sticky is a oddly named setting that simply determines whether the brush should pick a direction and stick with it or adapt on the fly to the direction of the or the normal of the surface beneath it. This can have a big effect on your sculpting, so be sure to try out both options. For example, with this turned on, if I start painting here, and you can see the direction or the, the normal direction of the surface by the green line pointing out from it, even as I move the mouse, it's still using that same direction. However, if I turn off brush normal is sticky, now it's going to dynamically pick a direction dependent on wherever my mouse is and the surface that's under it. So this will have a much different effect. You can see it's now sculpting out in all different directions as I move. The brush direction option is a drop down that lets you choose 
how PolyBrush should determine what is up or which direction, which directions to push and pull in, basically, when sculpting. For example, uh, this is pretty obvious on a plane here in Unity. We see Y as up, that's a global or a world up, but this changes quite a bit if you're working on a sphere or inside a cave or even on the side of something like this here, this little indent I've created. PolyBrush needs to know how to choose what directions to use when you are sculpting. The default brush normal will pick the up direction from the surface where you're hovering, as we showed a bit of when using the brush normal as sticky tool. So you can see that little line coming out of the center of the brush shows the direction it's going to sculpt in, or rather it shows the surface normal, which it's going to use when you have that set to brush normal. You can also choose the vertex normal option, which will push and pull in the direction for, uh, of each vertex. So you can see that'll lead to it sort of ballooning upward or inward if I'm holding control, again to do the inverse. Or you can choose any of the three specific directions up for Y, right being X, and forward being Z. Last here, the brush effect determines the maximum distance to push or pull when sculpting. You can set a small number for detailed sculpting or large for building mountains. Just remember that the brush strength, back up here under strength on the brush settings, will affect this as a percentage and can be modified by holding control and shift while scrolling, so that's generally the quickest method. You won't often change the brush effect, but it's there just in case you are having extreme differences in the size or scope of what you might be sculpting. Moving over to smoothing. Use this mode to smooth out any jagged edges or corners you might have created. So I can paint through here and smooth out some of what I've been creating there with the, with the sculpting tool. Smoothing retains the same mode specific settings as sculpting, except there's no longer a brush effect setting since you just use the brush strength, again up here in the brush settings, and that's a percentage determining how strongly to apply the smoothing. Vertex coloring, the third mode, is our first actual painting tool. In this mode, the brush will appear showing you the color that you're going to be placing. And when you left click and drag, it will paint vertex colors onto the mesh. In vertex coloring mode, the brush strength acts as an opacity control. So as I turn that up or down, I can paint on a little bit less and use that to blend colors together. something like that. A very important note here, PolyBrush will always apply colors to your mesh, but your shader will determine if that color is visible or not. For an easy start, just pick any of the shaders that say vertex color under the PolyBrush category. For example, on this item, under the material, I can choose PolyBrush, and I have diffuse vertex color, I have standard texture blend, and a few others. You can just use those, and that will work just fine. For the mode specific settings, of course you'll see quite a few or quite a different set of options versus sculpting. The palette dropdown allows you to choose between and create new color palettes, just like you did with the brushes or the brush settings, creating specific brushes and saving them. For painting, you can choose between the standard brush mode, as we were showing here, or you can use a fill mode that will fill in individual polys, something like this. Let's choose a different color, so that's a bit more obvious, and set my strength up to 100%. So now I'm filling in these polys. Or I can use the flood mode, which fills the entire surface. The color mask is an advanced option that will allow you to paint only on specific channels if you need to. By default, all channels are on, but you can selectively enable or disable these in special circumstances if you need to. The color swatches section displays first the current color and second all the swatches in this color palette. Click the current color to customize it or choose a working color to paint with. And let's switch that back to regular brush mode so we can go back to using this a bit more normally. If you'd like to save the color that you have set for your brush, you can click the plus button that will appear at the very end of the color swatches row and that will save it into your color palette. If you'd like to remove a color from the palette, 
click and drag on it and you'll see a trash can up here at the very bottom right of the color palette and drop it there to remove it. Changes to the color palette are applied automatically or they're saved automatically but don't worry if you make a change you didn't want to keep just hit Control Z and that will undo your change or Control Y to redo. Let's repaint this mesh to look a little bit better and then we'll move on to the next mode. Okay, that looks much better, and now we'll move on to the fourth mode, the placement mode, also known as mesh scattering. This allows you to place or scatter detail objects with a brush, similar to painting in grass, trees, and rocks using the terrain tools. The special options here are use pivot, number one, so this will choose whether the objects that you're painting on here will be placed at their pivot or at their center. For example, with this rock object selected here, if I turn on Use Pivot and click, the rock is placed at its pivot point. Or if I turn this off and click to place, it's placed at the center. Maybe the grass will actually be a better example here. So again, here's a pivot placement versus with having Use Pivot turned off. That would place the mesh using its center onto the surface where I click. Lock Brush to First is an option that's going to be very useful when painting on detail objects. This is going to ensure that you only continue painting on the first item you click on. So for example, as I'm painting on here, let's turn up the strength in this case in the brush setting so I can paint a bit more as I click and drag. So with the lock brush to first turned on, I'm only painting on the first item I click on. And this means I don't end up accidentally stacking up tons and tons of items on top of each other. It will keep placing them, but it's not going to place my grass on top of the grass, on top of the grass, etc. That's generally best to keep turned on, although you might have situations where you don't want that, so we give you the option. The Hit Surface is Parent option will make your placed objects children of the surface you're painting on. For example, I've had that on while painting here, and you can see under the plain object that I'm painting on, there we have all of the detail meshes I've been placing. So this is useful if you are moving, rotating, or scaling that main parent object, or if you need to turn it off, destroy it, anything like that. And of course, you want all those painted on detail meshes to move or be removed along with it. The Avoid Overlap option will try to ensure that as you're painting, items don't overlap each other. So it's going to paint a bit less, as you're seeing here, but it's trying to make sure that you aren't having these meshes overlap on each other. So that would be useful for items like trees, or again these rocks maybe, something that you don't want to stick into each other versus this grass. I could probably turn off Avoid Overlap and let it just paint lots and lots in there. Similar to the other painting modes, you also have a palette, in this case an object palette. This palette is automatically saved and you can add new ones via the Add Palette option. Drag the slider below it to choose the size of the preview which is automatically taken from the mesh, and click on items to highlight them, which will make them the current object to paint. You can hold Shift or Control to select multiple objects or to remove selected objects from the painting selection. Our surface here is getting a little bit busy, so of course you can hit Control Z to undo the painting actions. The final mode, Texture Painting, allows you to paint and blend textures onto a mesh, again very similar to texture painting within the terrain tools. You can paint anything from height-based blending to normal and height maps, mixing colors with textures, and just about anything else you can think of if you want to make your own shaders. Just like the vertex coloring, you'll need to make sure that your mesh's material has the right shader to show the blended textures. We include several examples for common uses, and the documentation includes a section on writing your own shaders if you really, really want to do that as well. To make sure this is clear, we'll go through that entire process, actually, using one of ours, not, uh, not writing your own. So I've created a material, and I've called it Polybrush Texture Blend. And you'll want to set this via the clicking on the shader option to one of the Polybrush Texture Blend options. So here I've chosen the standard texture blend bump option, and this will give you all the options or all the texture slots to drop in the diffuse texture and the bump for each. So here I've already dropped in the diffuse textures. You just drag and drop those as you need them. And then I can also add the textures, or sorry, the 
the normal textures into each slot. And you can see they correspond texture 3, texture 3 bump, etc. Just make sure you don't get any of these mixed up or you'll have a odd looking material. With this material ready, I can drag and drop it onto the mesh object. The panel will update with these new textures available. So just like painting in the placement mode, I can click to select a texture and then paint it in. All the brush settings tools still work the same of course, so I can hold control and make my brush a bit larger. Click to choose a different material perhaps. Hold shift to give it a larger inner radius if I'd like to be a little bit of a harsher brush. And of course hold control and shift to bring that strength up and down if I want it to just fade in the texture a bit more. I'll go ahead and make this look a little better than it currently does. Also don't forget you can choose just like the vertex coloring mode you can choose between using the standard brush or a fill tool to fill in polygons or the fill to fill in the entire mesh with a single color or texture in this case. Last in the toolbar, we have the only non-mode, the general settings. So here you can access and modify any tool-wide settings. So uh, versus the mode-specific settings, these will affect the entire tool no matter what mode you're currently using. As the tool is still in beta and things are changing quickly, I'll recommend that you check out the documentation for info on these, as they may and probably will change a bit more quickly than even any of these other settings, and videos get old quickly. So there's one last item we haven't talked about, that would be the brush mirroring settings, which are shown below the brush settings here in the panel. In the settings here, you'll see you have the XYZ options and world or camera. For reference, take a quick look at your view widget. You can see the Z or blue axis is going forward and back right now, or just about. The X is going left and right, and Y is up and down. So in world mode, if I turn on X for brush mirroring, you'll see I get a symmetry effect relative to the x-axis and I could do the same thing for the z-axis going forward and back here and if I had a spherical object or something with a top and bottom I could use Y to have a top and bottom mirroring. You can also turn on multiple modes or multiple mirroring options if you'd like to really paint a lot at once and for further control, you can change to the camera option. So when using camera, the axis is relative to the scene camera. As you can see here, as I move and rotate around, X is always to my left and right, and Y and Z will work similarly. And that's it for this video. The next step is jumping in and trying out all the painting and sculpting options, learning by use, and of course, letting us know if you have any thoughts or feedback. Polybrush is still in an early stage. There's lots more planned, so keep in touch. Watch out for new posts and videos soon. Thanks for watching, and happy painting.